And now, more reaction on the UK airline terrorist plot from the Council on American Islamic Relations. This is a little less than 15 minutes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Hooper. I'm National Communications Director for the Council on American Islamic Relations. Uh, thank you all for coming here today. Uh, we'll, we'll be very quick. Uh, we have uh, short statements from uh, CARE's Executive Director Nehad Awad and from CARE's Board Chairman Parvez Ahmed, and then we'll take any questions you might have. Uh, first of all, we have a prepared statement, and it'll be read by uh, Board Chairman Parvez Ahmed. Good morning. My name is Parvez Ahmed. I'm the Board Chairman for the Council on American Islamic Relations. Um, I'll read a short prepared statement. Uh, American Muslims have consistently and unequivocally condemned all acts of terrorism, whether carried out by individuals, groups, or states. We repudiate anyone or any groups that plans to carry out, carries out, carry out a terrorist act. We welcome early actions by law enforcement authorities against credible threats to the safety of the traveling public. The American Muslim community has always been dedicated to the protection of our national security. It is also important that our fellow Americans understand that Muslims are law-abiding citizens who should not be targeted or singled out because of their faith or national origin. We have been contacted by federal law enforcement authorities who are taking steps to ensure that there is no backlash against the American Muslim community. We commend them for their proactive efforts. We ask local Muslim communities to step up security measures at mosques and at other Islamic institutions. We also urge local law enforcement agencies to coordinate with their Muslim leaders to deter any hate crimes. It is very important, based on past counterterrorism cases that did not lead to terror convictions, that we withhold judgment until all facts of this case come to light. We also ask public officials and commentators to avoid using stereotypical and ill-defined terminology when referring to this and other similar cases. As the largest American Muslim civil rights and advocacy group, it is our religious duty and civic obligation to reach out to all Americans to affirm Islam's teaching of peace, justice, and tolerance for all. Thank you. And now I will introduce Nihad Awad, Executive Director for the Council on American Islamic Relations for a short statement. Thank you, Parviz. Um, as was made clear that uh, American Muslims condemn uh, acts of terrorism on innocent people. Uh, we are often asked whether the American Muslim community has done enough or condemned acts of violence. And I would like to invite people to go and visit our website, www.cair.com to visit that website and see a compilation of statements by American Muslim leaders, organizations, uh, leaders in the country and around the world who unequivocally and unconditionally and immediately have condemned acts of terrorism committed by individuals who are Muslims or groups or states. Also, we would like to inform our community to obtain this small booklet it's called Muslim Community Safety Kit uh, because in these times we asked American Muslim leaders to institute heightened security to protect their communities, their centers, and to work with the local media, with local law enforcement. Also specifically, we would like to urge public officials and uh, media and commentators to avoid hot button terms. We just heard President Bush referring to the perpetrators and he said uh, and I paraphrase that we are at war with Islamic fascists. We believe this is an ill-advised term 
and we believe that it is counterproductive to associate Islam and Muslims with, fa with fascism. We do not associate Christianity with, fa with fascism. We do not associate Christianity with terrorism. And yes, there are individual people who belong to the Christian faith, like Eric Rudolph, and like the, uh, uh, the group in Uganda that is acting in the name of Christianity and faith people. We reject associating these people with Christianity. The media rejects associating these people with Christianity. And I think we have to hold the same standards when it comes to Islam and Muslims. We ought to take advantage of these incidents to make it sure, make sure that we do not start religious war against Islam and Muslims. We have to isolate these individuals because there is nothing in Islam or the Islamic faith that encourages people to be cruel or to be vicious or to be criminal or to commit acts of violence against innocent people. The president knows this, we know it, and Muslims worldwide know that for sure. And we urge him and we urge other public officials to restrain themselves and deal with these individuals, A, as perpetrators, suspicious perpetrators that ought to be investigated. And once there is a final conclusion, we refer to them as criminals. But we should not honor them by giving them an Islamic terminology, because Islam is a religion of peace, as the president has stated it many times. We're saying this because our community should not be a second victim in this crisis. We have to protect the public, and part of that public is the American Muslim community. Thank you. I will take any questions you might have. Go ahead. The President's exact words were, this is a stark reminder that the nation is at war with Islamic fascists. Do you think he, he kind of insulates himself when he uh, refers to Islamic fascists, or do you think this ends up painting well, a broad brush? Well, first of all, uh, we'd have to have a definition of the term. These kinds of terms, uh, Islamist, Islamic fascist, Islamic fascism, all of these kinds of terms are used quite loosely, and they're never defined. And they're often applied to mainstream practicing Muslims uh, who are not involved in any kind of uh, violence or planning for violence. So, first of all, as journalists, I would hope that you would ask uh, anyone who uses these terms to define them and make sure that their definitions fit. I'm not exactly sure what that term means. If you mean people who are car carrying out acts of violence or planning acts of violence in the name of Islam, you know, that's one thing. But it's rarely limited to that kind of, of phenomenon. It's, it's broadened to include uh, millions and millions of Muslims worldwide, and that's what we object to. Can I make a follow-up quick sure. comment? Um, I would also urge American authorities to take the lead from the British authorities that have refrained from using any kind of hot-button terminology to characterize these cases. And I think that's responsible. There is already efforts in Europe that we have alluded to before in our past statements and releases to be very careful in characterizing these things. Associating criminal acts of individuals or groups with the faith of 1.2 billion Muslims worldwide is counterproductive to fighting terror. Uh, this morning we have called our counterparts, the Islamic uh, Council of Britain, Muslim the, main, Muslim the, the Muslim uh, Council of Britain, the main Muslim organization in Britain. And they're satisfied with the way the British authorities have handled the case. They called them in advance, and uh, they, uh, uh, the authorities and the local British media has refrained from associating Islam with the perpetrators. We believe this is responsible, this is the right way, because we cannot, again, honor the behavior of these people and attach it to the religion of peace, and that is Islam. And I think we, we, we gain nothing by getting religion into this because there is nothing in the religion of Islam that urges or encourages or condones acts of terrorism against innocent people. Any other questions? All right. If, oops. Uh, if there aren't any other questions, uh, everyone here will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews if you'd like. Uh, Thank you all for coming, and if you'd like, we can get you copies of the Muslim Community Safety Kit as well. Thank you. Thank you.
Tomorrow on Washington Journal, Time Magazine.